right here. Don't move. Stay right here. I'm letting you go. Don't move. Where'd you go? Okay, lean forward. Come back up here with me. Right there, stop. Trying to get you to sit by yourself so we can start doing other activities. So we can start standing, start trying to take steps, right? Oh. But when you start resisting and pushing, that makes it really, really hard. And put you at risk for falls, okay? Wilda said she's been really happy to see each day you're improving and being able to move your left arm or, you know. You're showing a lot of improvement each day. Well, she's uh, she's been my solid. Hmm. Force and mm -hmm. uh, I'll never for night forget the night it happened. Do you remember that? Do you remember Monday? I do. Mm -hmm. Because I got up. And I went into the bathroom there, and I had to grab the the wall, and I thought I can hardly stand up. I mean, I'm just about ready to fall down. Mm -hmm. I came back into the bedroom, and and I was holding on to the bed and I kind of wrestled her and I said, Wilda, I think something's wrong with me. She said, I think something happened in my head. I said, I can't walk. And, and it just happened all of a sudden. And it was almost like just a click up there and it happened. Did it happen when you were awake? Like yeah. you got up and then it happened? Yeah. Okay. And those legs just wouldn't, they just wobble along and didn't feel like they'd hold me up. Mm. Good job. Okay, how did you want to start? Did you just want to start? Well, I thought I'd, I'd just start about being born. Okay, good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of where I started. <laughs> okay, I was born August the 3rd, 1936, and not in a hospital, but out on a farm. It was a place called the Holt Place. I tried to get there last summer, but I couldn't make it. it was, there weren't enough roads to even get back to the place. What, what town and state is that? It's in the state of Missouri, and it's not really a town. I mean, it's a country farm. Um, <clears throat> my birth certificate 
Reed's Nevada, but I wasn't born there. That was because old Doc Keithley that, that came out from town when he knew my mother was about due to, I guess my father had actually gone to the local country store and called and said she'd started labor. So he, he started driving out. <clears throat> and he delivered me, and I don't know the exact time, but it was after, it was in the night. But I, oh, there's nothing like, I mean, I, I wouldn't trade my life as an educator for anything in the world. And it's, and the subtleties of the rewards for it are, are hard to explain. I, because there are some times that are really rough. Uh, there really are. Uh, but, the, but the, the, there's that, that incentive that, that gets, keeps getting fed by the little successes that you have. That's my dad, and that's his grandmother, the woman that he grew up with. This is the whole place. <clears throat> This is where I was born. In that building? In that building. Oh, wow. Have you ever been back there? Like I was once. You were once? When? When, when did you go back there? It was back when, early on, I went back from school and was at home that summer, and I drove out there to see it. Mm-hmm. Was the building was still there? The building was still there. Mm. Therapy here pretty grueling. I mean, are you, is it? It's 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 rough. Uh, they so much of it has to do with getting in and out of a wheelchair into a bed uh, or onto a to a potty chair, mm -hmm. and it takes about four people to get you up and get you standing and then get you to sit down in the right place. <laughs> you see, one of the most difficult things about this is just going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So probably you, for you, when you feel you've really have regained a lot, that's it's when you're able to at least stand up and walk and use the bath. That's your. That's when you feel like okay, I've 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 really accomplished something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And, and it will be an accomplishment. It, yeah. Because it's the normal things like that, that that are interrupted in a thing like a stroke. Mm -hmm. that you have to rely on help to do. Yeah. That are so demeaning. Yeah, so, so we're trying to get you to attend to the left side of things. 
whether that be a worksheet or when you're up and moving around and tending to the left side of the room, tending to the left part of your body. So remembering that you have an arm and a leg over here and not forgetting about them. That's what it is. It's called left inattention. And it's a very common side effect of the kind of stroke that you had. So a lot of times when someone has a stroke on the right side, they, they have something called left inattention where they're not attending to things on the left side. When we read, do we go left to right or right to left? Uh, we go right to left. We actually go left to right. When we read, we go left to right. So if you're reading a book, you're going to start on the left side and go left to right. Train, depart, station. Uh, 10 o'clock. So you're missing some words, and they're all on the left side. So here, I'm going to put a blue line. Find that blue line and try again. Most of them are the word B. The train will depart the station. 10 o'clock. And that ten. At 10 o'clock. There you go. Very uh, good. Now you got it. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going to happen when I, when and if I get out of here, whether I can actually go to a restaurant or not. And the next question is going to come, am I ever going to be able to drive again? Yeah. Keep working at it, maybe, you know. Yeah, it may come about. Yeah. It's an awful thing to say, but I hope if I have another one, it's a fatal one. Mm -hmm. Because it's just, changes your life so much. No, yeah. There you go. All righty, Don. Straight up, ready? One, two, three. Now look up, Don. Even taller than that. Come to the middle. Look there. All right. Lean towards. Look at your son over there. There you hey, go. Mark. <laughs> Mark, you're a good Mark. Yeah, I get to look. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I'm here for. Yep. <laughs> Don, look at you. Why don't we All right. Let's walk up to that first. So you're leaning my way. Can you go back to the middle? Look at your beautiful wife. Lean towards her. You don't know how much I paid her to keep Sam beautiful. <laughs> I think one of the second hardest things about this is finding your center of gravity. Yeah. And always sitting so that you're straight up and down. Good. Now we'll stand. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah. Good. There you go. There you go. There yeah. you go. Great. It's a, it took a, a while for me to get used to thinking that all these poking pegs and bullets and things like that was doing me any good. But I suddenly realized that it was doing me some good. So now I put all the pegs in they want me to. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, it works. Mm -hmm. Plus, I like, the, I like the, uh, the physical part of it, the walking. Mm -hmm. uh, riding the machines down there and all that sort of thing because I'm getting stronger in my legs I'm getting stronger in my arms yeah. and all that yeah I mean I can just see your left arm you're using it like I would like now I wouldn't have known you had a stroke you're, yeah. last time I saw you you still were sort of half using it half yeah. using it yeah didn't have any real strength in it. yeah let's see how we get up on this 
So when she came in, the the nurse that took your vital, oh, she's yeah. like, "Oh, I hear you here. You're the poster boy of this area. What was that?" <laughs> well, I've I've made strides in some of these areas that other uh, management people come by and and talk to me and watch me do what I do, and I thought. I should have had Mark bring a video camera and just do a video dick uh, accounting of what's happening in here mm -hmm. and do a documentary on it. <laughs> you know, my old man and what's happened in his old age. <laughs> so they've noticed how much you've advanced, like more than what normally? More than normal, yeah. Really? The people I'm working with say it's because he puts in even more time than anybody else. Well, I do. I spend a lot of time in the gym. And I, I go to my uh, my classes that are designed to make my left side develop. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in, in therapy just don't go. They get tired of them, just don't go. Mm -hmm. But I, <coughs> I do realize there's value in because I've seen that value happen even in me. I too are H N. Good. So you're at the letter N, so you put the letter N. And believe it or not, it's going to spell a word for you. Okay. I'll take your word for that. <laughs> I'm spelling never was very really good, but anyway. We're in training now to get me in and out of the car. And I'm, I'm using a walker. And I, I walk all over the place with that walker. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just fantastic. I like that. They... They put me through all these exercises. And this this Friday I come home. Yeah. And so they got this mock car down there. Now, before you swing your legs in, we got to get that bottom all the way back. All the way through there. Yep. So you can reach up and use this bar here. Like there's a little handhold in your car at home. Yeah. So you can use that. Yep. So yep, Mike. There you go. Yep. I'm going to grab a bit of them. Okay. Because I think I can screen it a little easier. This, go to the left one first. See if I can always do the left first. Now push that bottom back. There. There. <clears throat> I, think no. the I think you'll find this easier on your car, Don. Sometimes this, the simulator, it's just that, it's a simulator. Yeah. Okay. Was there a time during all the therapies or whatever while you've been here that you felt like you like went over a hump, like, okay, now I'm getting, you're making enough progress that, okay, things are looking better. Do you yeah, remember what that was? <clears throat> it was the day that my two gals that I adore that work with me in, in moving and walking and all that sort of thing took me up the two flights of metal stairs just walking and they had, then they, they took me up with the walker too and I thought okay I can go into a store with metal stairs and I can go two stories up and I can go two stories down. I didn't think I could do that, but it went fairly, fairly easy. Uh, and I, and at that point, they said to me, "You don't need a wheelchair to go home, Don. You go home on a walker, and you'll be fine." But it, it, it helped. It helped my attitude because I felt like I was going to be able to handle the whole damn thing. 
I didn't really care at that point whether I could drive yet or not. I, I, I look forward to the time when I can, but at the same time, I, I, don't, it's, I don't feel like it's going to hold me back from living a good life at home. Mm -hmm. And being a relief, release of a lot of tension for Wilda. Because she's she shouldered a lot of big burdens since I've been in this situation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah. And your being up here um, has really helped her too. You've relieved her a lot of, of her feeling of the responsibility of being here all the time. Mm -hmm. She's getting a little break from that. Nine o'clock? Yes. Mm -hmm. Keep that the same. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right. Once we get a good schedule, I have to keep it. <laughs> if we can. So are you ready to leave? <laughs> are you ready to leave? Go home? I'm ready to go home. Yeah, I really am. Mm. <clears throat> and I feel good that, I mean, Will is going to be there. And I'm, I can get around pretty well by myself and do pretty much anything for myself. Yeah, you look great. <laughs> I'm actually doing some walking without the cane. Yeah. But, uh, uh, well, it's a relief to be able to walk. Hmm. I thought getting a driver's license was a symbol of independence and freedom, but no, being able to walk is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not driving yet. It may be a while before I do that. But getting out of the hospital is the biggest relief. God, I couldn't stand the food over there. <laughs> yeah. You know, you brought me sandwiches in the morning. And I, uh, Wilda brought me something almost every morning, just so I could have something to eat in the morning. What yeah. was it like to come home the first time? It was fantastic. It's like being reborn again. And sleeping in my own bed, my God. I thought I'd never get up, wake up again. I'm just, I was so thrilled to be in my own bed. Mm. I don't run up and down stairs anymore. <laughs> you will. I will. Uh. Did you ever? <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever? Oh yeah. This has been a very a much quicker kind of recovery than what's normally done. Do you feel like this has been a quicker? Faster than I expected. Uh, particularly in the beginnings when they started the rehab, I I didn't think I could last very long in that, but. For some reason, I I did re I did survive it um, because it, it was it was very demanding in the beginning. I had some really good physical therapists over there too. Yep. That when when it started, I, they they were they were friendly, they were helpful, they were kind, and I had a couple of gals over there uh, that were bound and determined to see me walk. And they asked me what I wanted to do, and I said, I want to walk. And so they got me up and got me walking faster than I ever dreamed that they would. 
And I, I guess I really owe a lot to them because they never gave up on me. And they never got me into a situation where I felt like my inability to do something was a real downfall, a real step back or something, you know. And they were always just encouraging and uplifting, so that worked. I had a little bit of an argument with a with a one of the therapists that wanted me to, to, to do artwork. And I said, well, I don't think I want to do artwork. And I said, I think I'm going to just retire from artwork. And she was insistent that I, I try some things. And I'm glad she did because she was right. I was I was giving up. She said, I don't want you to give up. Well, I did some painting in there, but I, it wasn't anything to keep. I mean, it was just just an attempt. And I said, well, this is something I used to do and I did fairly well. And suddenly not be able to do it as well as I did before seems like a step backwards to me. But now, now you, you, you wanted me to bring the photos because you're thinking about painting again. Yeah, I'd like to start painting again. Yeah, and when I do, I don't, I don't want to have to go out in the boondocks and stand there. I'll probably go to the basement, put it on a, on a table, on an easel, and sit down and paint because I can do that because I've got an image to look at. I think this building is interesting. Yes. I do too. That one and right this one's right here. The one yeah. in the foreground there. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, the, the photographs are a really big help. And why did you want those particular? Um, I had in my mind that I might, might do some, some of those paintings for a few of the people I knew in the hospital. Because that, that room, they all would come in and say, listen, you've got the best looking room in the house, you know. You, their views are better, and, and I thought, well, they, they've got a point. They are. It's a beautiful image out of the windows here. And you, you're, you're a good photographer, so you could take an image and uh, with a camera better than most people I know through a, <laughs> through a glass. I mean, again, it's it's just amazing. You're at this point, just two months later. Yeah, you know, you're. I'm amazed by that. Yeah, and I don't realize it's been that short a time. Mm. Yeah, and I'm not sure why. I think determination was the main factor. I just really wanted to get out of the hospital. I really wanted to walk. And if you don't have that, and if you don't have the support of somebody like I had with Wilden, I don't know how they make it. I really don't know how they get out of the hospital. Mm. And what, so again, explain what happened in your head that caused the problem. Like what? We don't know. They have no idea what caused the stroke. They just know that mine was a, was one where they had a spasm, a blood vessel broke up there. What caused that, they don't know. So many factors could be a, problem, a, a, a reason. Uh, high blood pressure, uh, and I didn't I haven't had high blood pressure ever. And uh, it could have been a uh, a trauma to the brain can cause it. A hit, a bump that I don't remember even having. 
uh, or it could just have been a weak vessel up there that just erupted. I, I think in, in terms of strokes, I was lucky that the one I had what I had. But I don't have any, there was no pre, pre-warning, there was no feelings, no indications that there was a, a stroke imminent. And I just remember waking up in the middle of the night and I'd gone to the bathroom and I came back and I couldn't make my feet work right to get back in bed. And I said to Wilda, I don't know what's happened, Wilda, but I said, I, my feet don't work. And I think something's happened in my head. She grabbed the phone and dialed 911 and before she laid that phone there, they were at the front door. Mm -hmm. They also say that the time that they react is very important to your survival and to your reaction. So, I had a feeling they were parked right up the street, <laughs> literally, because they were here so fast. And I was in the hospital and within a five minutes, three minutes or something. I don't know, it was just a short, short time. I feel basically like I've always been a lucky guy. Hmm. And this has proven it to me that I'm actually very lucky. Um, all through life I think I've been lucky because of the things that have happened to me. And a lot of it has nothing to do with ability or anything, it's just pure luck. <laughs>